Members of the SOA and family and friends, my name is Rob Graham and I'm a project director on the SOG Prairie Fire video game. And we're presenting our game here today at uh, the Special Operations Association reunion. And I have Sam with me here. Hi, everybody. And uh, Sam is a US Army veteran and one of our voice actors who got to play um, Ken Bowray and Jim Shorten in our, in our game. Yeah, a huge honor to be able to do that and kind of help uh, help tell their story and the story of so many uh, other veterans of SOG and of special operations. And uh, we got a pretty incredible team behind this uh, this project, Rob. I mean, I, it's something to, be, to really be proud of. Yeah, I think um, just so everybody understands, we've got probably 120 people that worked on the game in total in 37 countries worldwide. Um, and they weren't paid until after the game was released and they're, they're, they're gathering their income now from game sales. So these guys and girls um, were all very passionate um, to be telling you the story of the special operations guys in Vietnam. Um, and these are stories that really haven't been told before and certainly not in games. We've also had an amazing advisor team of uh, MACB SOG veterans, including Major General Ken Bowray, Staff Sergeant John Stryker Meyer, Sergeant First Class Jim Shorten Jones, as well as Spec 5 Don Hasse, and later on in the project, Lieutenant Colonel Dick Thompson, and a couple other veterans of special operations who have uh, gotten involved in the project. And we're extremely proud of that. We're very, very grateful to be able to work with them and, and help uh, to tell the story of Mac Sog. So we put together a video, which we hope is gonna give you an idea of what our game is all about. And it features some of the thoughts and the reactions from our veteran advisors and friends. We hope you enjoy it. Sog Prairie Fire is a game focused on realism and historical authenticity. Intended to bring the stories of Mac v. Sog and special operations in Southeast Asia to life. We ask that you keep in mind certain aspects we can't recreate due to technical limitations, such as triple canopy jungle vegetation, the physical stature of indigenous troops, and string insertions and extractions. We hope you'll look past these inaccuracies to see a project created out of passion, love, and respect for the history and people behind the secret wars across the fence. Enjoy the presentation. There was a little confusion at the beginning. You know, I'd never seen a game, didn't know anything about it. And then all of a sudden we were headed to the, um, the helicopter, you know, to fly out. Um, but now I'm, I'm hearing that whine. I'm, I'm hearing that rotor turning. Um, by the time I got on the helicopter, I was smelling JP4. I could feel the vibration of the helicopter. Uh, and I noticed, you know, my arousal level started going up a little bit. I was starting to get a little pumped, even though I wasn't a player. I didn't have a gun, but I figured I could get one out there someplace if I needed it. If I get into a mindset, you know, when, when I leave the skid, I'm in and I'm coming for you. you know, be no doubt in your mind, I'm coming after you. Um, and I found myself going there. I, I was excited about it, um, fascinated with how everything was working. When we got to, uh, eventually got to the building and the firefight really intensified, um, I could feel my arousal level go up the air with the tracers, uh, the explosions, everything that was going on. Um, I was fascinated with the detail of the white phosphorus grenades, watching them explode and thinking, yeah, they throw all that stuff out like that. That's pretty cool to get that detail in the game. If you can create a, a story through programming, through writing, through the visual effects that's powerful enough to cause you to smell things that are not there, like JP4, uh, in the mission where we were in the RON and the bad guys are walking, I could smell them. I could smell what they had for their last supper. 
I mean, the insert, like Dick just said, that insert, man, my adrenaline was was picking up, absolutely. And then when they got out of the helicopters, it's like, man, there's there's not enough jungle here. <laughs> and they had to haul ass to get to the jungle. So that was just a little bit too realistic. But, uh, oh, yeah, my heartbeat was up on that one. That's what I remember the most from that, because it's just like, welcome to the jungle, baby. RPD suppressing. When I ran the first mission with them uh, was the bright light mission and, uh, you know, going in and, and recovering the pilot. And, you know, when I got out after that mission, I was just exhausted. I mean, it was almost like, you know, doing an actual mission the way you, you know, your adrenaline's up and everything. And then you're, you're on the helicopter and it's all done and you come back and sit down. And you, a few minutes later, you start getting that spent feeling, the look of the weapons, the sound of the weapons, the way the weapons operate, um, you know, it's a very realistic. picked up uh, Lynn Black's book first and then w worked my way through all of Tilt's books and then uh, We Few as well, Nick Brockhausen and bit by bit I've been rereading them over and over. Once you kind of realise how special the mission you guys did was, you know, the odds you were up against, the, the deep relationships with the Indigenous troops, all of those factors really uh, struck a chord in me. You know, it wasn't the typical U.S. infantry in Vietnam. It was just so different, and it, and it was quite a, an eye-opener to see just a really balanced and true um, account of men at war, which didn't have the kind of mythology that you get in a lot of the modern movies. And and it's just a shame that, that I think that, that this stuff hasn't been done. It hasn't been done in Hollywood. It hasn't been done in TV or film. Um, and here we are. So this is this was why we, we focused on SOG in this video game, was to begin telling that story and, and sort of seeing where we could go with it, you know. When you first contacted me, uh, it's over three years ago when we started talking, and uh, what is important and was important for me to, to look at this was objectively was this would be a tribute to those we served with, not only the U.S., but our indigenous team members who were really uh, the lasting permanent force of all of our teams. And then the, those that supported us, uh, aircraft in particular, who would bail us out of, of difficult situations. So the game being a tribute to ensure that it was accurate, to preserve that legacy uh, to future generations, to those currently serving, uh, to those who are out there to learn, and then to bring everyone together uh, for one reason I think that's important, which is teamwork. To pull everyone together as you guys work together playing the games. Now, I only got to observe two games last week with my friends, but uh, watching people pull together uh, and you learn that teamwork's important. I think creating a game and creating it uh, the way you have by trying to make everything accurate, the terrain, the weapons, and everything that we were doing kind of <clears throat> establishes a, a historical record of what we did, how we did it, uh, that'll be out there. Future people can go back and uh, you know, play the game and see what the conditions were like for us.
the attention to detail with with Ken and Tilt and the other other uh, advisors with you know taking their pictures and and uh, incorporating the detail of the helicopters, the weapons, uh, the the gear, and everything. Um, I think it's uh, a great tribute to the uh, veterans and uh, our fallen comrades that uh, some of whom are still uh, somewhere in the jungles of uh, Cambodia or Laos and uh, we're looking for them still and I see it as a tribute to them. We've also been recording interviews with uh, SOG veterans. Uh, we've done quite a few so far, about seven or eight, including one where we had six guys all at once uh, talking about their experiences in SOG, which has been uh, you know, quite, quite a riot. By the way, if you can smell urine and burnt kerosene, that means there are aviators around. <laughs> you don't take your wire straight out and lay your claymore so it'll blow out. What you do is you go out and you go this way, and then you put the claymore this way. So when the claymore blows, it blows that way. And of course, the Frenchman in black, they were tracked for two days by orangutans. Lynn scratched himself, and then the orangutan was copying all the gestures. And finally, by the end, they gave him the uh, primal finger salute, and the orangutan responded accordingly. <laughs> And the last one they did, they actually did it in support of uh, our collaboration with uh, Dick Thompson, um, which we, we did to, to bring forward a program supporting veteran welfare. You know, we spent a lot of time looking at what are the best practices to help you uh, maintain stress resilience, build stress resilience, and be able to continue to press the battle uh, to help you live longer in, in a normal life but also help you to have um, much higher stress resilience and be able to handle um, a COVID environment like we're in now, or be able to deal with pulling out of Vietnam, pulling out of Afghanistan. There are a lot of techniques in here that can help veterans, uh, can help anyone. And six of veterans turned up for that, as I say. And we raised about $10,000 to support probably about 300 veterans uh, getting um, some improvement in their resilience to stress. Now, that obviously, that work hasn't happened yet, but the funds are in place and we're working with a veteran-owned charity uh, to deliver that support. Our final mission in the Sog Prairie Fire video game campaign is Oscar Raid which is based on Lynn Black's target on October 5th, 1968. And this mission is extremely challenging for players, inspired by the conditions in the actual Oscar 8 target. If the team makes it out in the game, um, they get a special sequence which uh, features Major General Bo Ray. Yeah, so, so what happened there was Ken uh, reached out to me and said, uh, Rob, I think I could write a nice debriefing for the team. So when the team finishes, you know, I'll come in and, and congratulate them on, on what they've done. And, and when he delivered it in one take, I was blown away. It was so good. Um, and what Ken also did was he gave us his uh, CCM recon plaque that he was he was presented with before he left uh, the, the FOB for the last time. Um, and we, we mocked that up in game uh, for our fictional recon team, Columbia. Okay, listen up. You guys have been on the ground. You've met the enemy up close and personal. And now I think you'll understand what I'm about to tell you. For those who have fought for it, life has a special flavor that the protected will never know. Well done, Columbia. After General Bowray's dedication, there's this awesome sequence where an actual radio recording of a Prairie Fire emergency uh, with RT Colorado and RT Hawaii, which is famously the only known recording of a SOG Prairie Fire emergency, plays during the ride home in the slick. 
And it's definitely a really sobering experience for all of the players uh, who, who go through that. And it, it kind of everybody quiets down and starts to realize the true meaning behind what the project is all about. It has a profound impact, Sam. I mean, any of us that have played that mission, uh, you know, you barely get out and then, you know, you're sitting listening to the real team um, and thinking about what they really went through. Um, we were asked by John Plaster, particularly in giving permission to use the recording, to make sure we, did, we used it in a non-trivial way. Well, we put it right there and it's a kick in the teeth at the end of the finale. So just when you feel like you've, you've made it through, you're now listening to the real guys doing the mission. And we also uh, reached out through Tilt to Lynn St. Laurent and Pat Mitchell, who served on Colorado in that mission. So, so they're, uh, they're, some of their voices are heard. We also digitized uh, and cleaned up the audio recording from uh, Louis Sabelski's cassette. Uh, when we had cleaned it up, we gave, we gave a copy to Major General Burray to hand over to the SOCOM command historian for safekeeping. SOG Prairie Fire is a very special project to us. It's given our team an amazing sense of responsibility and purpose in telling the stories of Mac v. SOG through a video game. The project has enabled us to partner with the SOA in bringing together players and veterans of all ages to play the game and talk about the history behind the war. It's incredibly meaningful to us to have the relationship and support we do with our advisors, the SOA, and its members and we hope to continue to generate interest for today's young adults in learning about Mac v. SOG and the Vietnam War. Thank you.